All right, so what we're going to do in the second lecture here, the second lecture in molecular biology of the gene, is take a look at the replication process. How does DNA go from being this double helix to two double helixes, to an identical copy? So there's going to be a series of steps that it goes through, and the goal is to start with one strand of DNA, and then you double it. But when you double it, it needs to be identical. So what I'm going to do is show you guys a little video, a really good video that is sitting out there on YouTube. I'm going to screen record it for you so you can take a look at how this process works, talk about it, and then the thing I really want you to understand with DNA replication is, A, it's what we call semi-conservative, but it also is a critically important process to ensure the genetic accuracy of every single cell that's getting replicated. All right, so let me move the video over here for you, take a look at this, and then we'll talk about it as it's going along. Cells like these prokaryotic E. coli cells replicate themselves quickly and efficiently. Part of the process of asexual reproduction is the ability of cells to make identical copies of their DNA before cell division occurs. Okay, so she's talking about prokaryotic cells. Same kind of concept that we're going to talk about with eukaryotic cells. Bacteria use binary fission. Sometimes it's only a 20 minute process for one cell to turn into two. But the replication is going to be very similar to what we're doing in our cells. Double stranded DNA is a polymer of two strands of RNA which are hydrogen bonded to each other to form a double helix. Nucleotides are molecules that consist of a deoxyribose sugar, a phosphate, and one of four nitrogenous bases. The phosphodiester backbones consist of alternating sugar and phosphate groups. The nitrogenous bases include cytosine, thymine, adenine, and guanine. Cytosine forms three hydrogen bonds with guanine, and thymine forms two hydrogen bonds with adenine. This is referred to as complementary base pairing. The double helix will have one strand oriented in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction relative to the hydroxyl group of the deoxyribose sugar, and the other strand oriented in a 3' prime to 5' prime direction. This shows the anti-parallel nature of the DNA strands. That means one strand points up, the other side points down. Allows replication to be executed in a semi-conservative manner. Each strand of the DNA molecule is used as a template in the creation of a new double strand. Replication begins with double-stranded DNA being separated, and each original strand, called a parent strand, is used as a template for the complementary base pairing of nucleotides to make two new molecules. DNA replication occurs in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, adding new nucleotides to the 3' prime end of the newly forming strand. DNA replication will begin at a specific area of the molecule called the origin of replication. The origin of replication denotes the area of active replication we call the replication fork. In order to understand how complex eukaryotic organisms replicate DNA, scientists first studied replication in prokaryotic models like E. coli. A number of enzymes are needed for replication to proceed once the replication fork is established. Helicase separates the strands of the double helix, and single-stranded binding proteins stabilize the newly single-stranded regions. DNA gyrase is used to make sure the double-stranded areas outside of the replication fork do not supercoil. Once the replication fork is stable, DNA polymerase catalyzes the addition of new nucleotides to the growing daughter strand. Other proteins, such as beta clamps and the clamp loader, help hold the DNA polymerase in place on the DNA. Short sequences of RNA, called primers, have to be paired to the template strands by the enzyme primase 
because DNA polymerase cannot begin to add nucleotides without a primer. Replication of both strands occurs at the same time, one using continuous synthesis and the other discontinuous. Continuous synthesis occurs on the 3' prime to 5' prime oriented parent strand, referred to as the leading strand. New nucleotides are added to the 3' prime end, moving continuously toward the expanding replication form. Discontinuous synthesis occurs on the parent strand that is oriented 5' prime to 3', prime, called the lagging strand, and is completed in segments called Okazaki fragments. Replication on this strand uses primase to add primers ahead of the 5' prime end of the lagging strand. DNA polymerase 3 then adds short sequences of nucleotides, the Okazaki fragments, to the primer, filling in the gap. As the helix is opened further, this process repeats until the entire strand is replicated. DNA polymerase 1 replaces the RNA primers with DNA nucleotides and DNA ligase is used to ensure bonding between the fragments and the replaced nucleotides. Once both the leading and lagging strands have completed their replication, two identical copies of the DNA molecule result. The process of DNA replication allows actively dividing bacterial cells to make sure all daughter cells have the same genetic instructions as the parent cell, allowing them to function in the same manner. Thus, bacterial populations can grow, increasing the number of individuals in a colony. Okay, so a lot of terminology there that you're probably going, what's going on here? So we're going to break it down, make it basic, simple, key things that I want you guys to understand and to know. All right, so let's jump to this slide. All right, so let me move this over. And let's take a look at the basic idea here. All right, so you have a DNA strand. Let me do it in green. And it looks like a ladder. The ladder has to get ripped open and opened up in order for replication to occur. So that little triangle is what we're going to call the DNA helicase. That opens up, that's supposed to be the triangle there, that is the structure, the enzyme, if you noticed in the video, they called it an enzyme, that will open up the strand. It rips it open. That's the job of the DNA helicase, to break open the DNA strand. Now, once it's opened up, these little things called binding proteins hold it open. Those are little blue X's here. So a binding protein is going to hold the strand open because the natural tendency will be for the strand to close back up and the bonds to reform. Okay, hold the strand open with the binding proteins. Now, DNA has to know, well, where do I start replicating? Well, that is what the RNA primers do. So there will be one here and one here. The RNA primers tell it, here's your starting point, and then replication is going to occur in that direction from this primer. Primer up here, replication occurs in that direction from that primer. So the primers, the RNA primers, are the starting point for replication. So they have to be put there to say, all right, this is where you start replicating. Now the DNA polymerase my example, or my term for this guy, is your bottled Elmer's glue. So if you guys have ever used a bottle of glue, this is supposed to be a bottle of Elmer's glue, it's going to add the bases to the strand. So if there was a T here, Elmer's glue is going to put an A here. If there was a C here, Elmer's glue would put a G here. On the other side of the strand, there would have been an A here. Elmer's glue is going to put a T if there was a G here, Elmer's glue would put a C. So its job is to, the polymerase I want you to worry about, the video talked about different ones, but the polymerase I want you to focus on will attach the complementary
will attach a oh, strand, I gotta spell it right, will attach the complementary bases to the original strand. They're just gonna pair it up. And then the DNA ligase, its main job is to come in and proofread the new strand. It's gonna look over this and it's gonna try to identify are there mistakes? Are there errors? Let's fix it. Proofread it and fix errors if possible. Hopefully there are none, but in reality there will always be errors on the DNA strand. Okay, so key structures. These are all protein-based enzyme structures. If you don't have the right pH or the right temperature or the right amino acids, these structures do not form now you compromise DNA replication and mutations can show up and errors can occur and mistakes happen and that is never ever a good thing. Okay, so the pretty picture of it, this is what it looks like as it's replicating. There's that region of replication, they call it the replication fork, where all the activity is happening and then the new strands kind of string out and move away from the replication fork. But keep in mind, it's not starting at the top. It's not like, here's your chromosome. I'm just going to stretch it out. And replication starts here and only goes like this, down and down and down. Replication will be happening in multiple locations simultaneously. So here's a better picture. You can have dozens of replication forks happening at the same time, and DNA is replicating in opposite directions simultaneously. That's how we can replicate three billion pairs of letters in the matter of maybe four, five, six hours. If we started at the first chromosome at the top and went all the way through chromosome one and then went to two and then to three and all the way through the 23 pairs, it would take weeks to replicate one cell. We can't wait weeks. Most cells if we're talking about skin and hair, they replicate within a course of 24 hours. They go through the entire cell cycle in 24 hours, and then at the end, you have two cells after 24 hours. You can't spend weeks and weeks and weeks replicating your DNA. It's got to be a fast process, but it has to be an efficient one that's accurate. So with replication, they mentioned continuous and discontinuous. Continuous replication will occur on the strand, I can't get it right here, strand that is smooth and continuous. So its DNA will just replicate, 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 and attaching the new bases because it's following the five to three direction with the new letters. The discontinuous strand is also known as Okazaki fragments. I'm not worried about you memorizing that name, but discontinuous replication does this leapfrogging replication. So a RNA primer will be put down and then it'll replicate and then it'll jump backwards and replicate and jump backwards and replicate. So here's our Okazaki. So it replicates like this, thinks it's done, and then has to jump back and replicate this way, thinks it's done. Then it jumps back, replicates this way, thinks it's done, jumps back, and it again keeps doing this leapfrogging technique with replication. Continuous starts here and just this nice, smooth, easy, less effort replication. So one side actually replicates faster than the other side. All right, so when we're looking at this, this process occurs during the don't put a S phase of the cell cycle. So this is our window of DNA replication. Might be four to maybe six hours of the cell's life that it spends replicating its DNA. And hopefully, hopefully, let's keep your fingers crossed, everything goes correctly and there are no mistakes during replication. Because if you screw up and the cell doesn't fix it, those mistakes get passed on to the resulting offspring cells, and then it can just copy and keep copying those mistakes, and it never goes away. All right, so we'll check out how this process works in the next lecture.